Hello everyone and welcome to today's presentation hosted by Konica Minolta Healthcare. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. In this presentation, you will hear three distinguished physicians provide their perspective on the value of dynamic digital radiography and how it can expand radiology's contribution to the diagnosis of disease. Our healthcare system is transitioning at a pace never before experienced. And with that transition comes the need to do more and learn more from the technologies that we use every day. At Konica Minolta, we're transforming primary imaging through innovation, redefining X-ray as a diagnostic tool, and delivering the capability for you to see things differently in a way you've not seen them before. Last year, we introduced you to the concept of dynamic digital radiography, or DDR, and the clinical research underway in pulmonary radiology and orthopedic imaging. DDR is the reinvention of X-ray, capturing a series of rapidly acquired images that result in a cine or movie. This allows you to see how anatomical structures move in relation to one another over a period of time. So now, let's hear what the experts have to say. Dr. Scott Bowden, uh, Chairman of the Department of Orthopedics at Emory University School of Medicine in Atlanta, Georgia, and Vice President for Business Innovations of Emory Healthcare. Part of my role as Vice President for Business Innovation is to develop strategic partnerships with uh, global leaders in healthcare innovation and try and bring uh, a partnership that allows us to help develop and bring to fruition new technologies that really need a clinical use setting and, and delivery partner to really get the most out of the new technology and make it relevant for patients and providers and new opportunities for diagnosis and treatment. We're really excited in the Department of Orthopedics to be partnering with Konica Minolta to help really explore and maximize the uses of this DDR technology. We think there's a lot of opportunity when it comes to certain musculoskeletal problems that are hard to diagnose on a regular x-ray. Some examples are neck pain uh, after car accidents or just injuries. In many cases, if it's not a broken bone or a, a spinal bone that's out of position that you could see on an x-ray, but instead it's some sort of an abnormal motion. If you can imagine a neck moving and there's a little hitch, you would never see that hitch if you didn't watch the motion through the whole plane of movement. And so we think, that's just one example for neck pain or low back pain, which are very common problems, to be able to see a whole new class of diagnoses that don't involve bones that you can see on a single position x-ray, but abnormalities in movement, and correlating that with problems and then treatments. And being able to do that with low energy, so it's safe for the patient, and being able to capture that digitally and eventually combine that with artificial intelligence to be able to detect small abnormalities in motion, we think is a very promising opportunity. One of the reasons that we were excited that Konica Minolta is one of our strategic partners in the Emory Healthcare Innovation Hub is that we think that Konica Minolta shares a similar vision of using technology to innovate in healthcare and to be able to provide new treatments and new diagnostic possibilities using technology rather than the old conventional machinery. And that's something that we're very excited about and I think is a shared common vision. My name is Alex Kagan. I'm site chair for radiology at Mount Sinai Morningside and Mount Sinai West. Uh, in New York City. X-rays are, you know, kind of far and away the number one ordered study in any imaging facility, whether it's uh, especially in a hospital. Um, and really chest X-ray is the number one ordered exam. Um, so it's the most commonly ordered study that we do. Um, we have deep experience with, with Konica and their um, uh, their technology with regards to um, uh, a digital radiography. And um, when I met the Konica team, we were both enthused at how we can take the most ubiquitous exam that we perform, which was the chest x-ray, and really do more than we were ever doing before with it. 
Um, so instead of just looking at you know a single image and seeing if there's uh, a pneumonia or a lung nodule um, or any kind of anatomic disease process, we could now, with Konica's technology, um, get into not only anatomy, but seeing anatomy better, but getting into function and physiology. Meaning you could use the same x-ray device that we were to take a chest x-ray and actually do a breathing or dynamic chest x-ray um, that you can watch the patient's muscles as they breathe, as they inhale, as they exhale. You can watch how much air is flowing in and flowing out. You could quantify that because it's digital so that we're able to process that uh, secondarily. Um, and it's really, so it's really the, the taking um, uh, the simple chest x-ray and pairing it with you know, high-end technology to now uh, uh, produce you know, a functional exam um, that wasn't present previously. With DDR, we can perform this functional exam in 10 seconds. And it's on the same device that takes regular chest x-rays. So if you think about the time it takes for a patient to schedule an appointment uh, in a pulmonary function lab, uh, go to that appointment um, on a different day that they may be seeing their doctor, um, and it could take at least 15 minutes or so. Um, our exam with DDR, is at the same location as the chest x-ray that they need anyway, and it's 10 seconds long. Um, so it's really a win-win for patients and, and doctors. We can see, for example, a motion of the diaphragm, and whether that can cause, you know, patients who are short of breath, it could be a number, re number of reasons why they present uh, with shortness of breath. Um, if they have kind of faulty diaphragm uh, motion that isn't symmetric and isn't coordinated, um, they can have a muscular diaphragm disorder um, that otherwise would be occult on a static x-ray because you don't have the motion component. Um, uh, we've also found that um, uh, looking in two planes, meaning both frontal and lateral, when you image from the side, um, you're able to see the patient's chest wall expand and contract in ways that we previously did not have. Um, so you can therefore diagnose different diseases, again, mostly related to muscle dysfunction, uh, and then prescribe appropriate therapies uh, for that patient. This dynamic x-ray um, can allow patients uh, to be diagnosed in one single visit uh, rather than multiple, um, and quicker than before, um, and with less radiation, uh, which is all beneficial to the patient. Being able to perform a dynamic exam, like a breathing x-ray, and then producing a report that shows uh, uh, you know, flow of air uh, in the lungs, I think will be an amazing success for, for not only uh, pulmonologists, but also for emergency departments. I think quantifying uh, uh, blood flow with cardiac output would be amazing. I think um, looking at uh, uh, this technology in, in the setting of trauma and looking for unstable fractures, whether it's neck, whether it's wrist, um, uh, uh, I think would be, would be very helpful that would help patients at the point of care um, rather than having to send to some remote department, do a test and, and come back or maybe not even have it offered uh, a day later. A lot of doctors are excited about what areas of medicine we can use this in. And particular use cases come to mind, like um, uh, asthmatics who present to the emergency room, if you're short of breath and we can do a dynamic x-ray and we can find out which areas of the lung get oxygen and which areas don't, we can then decide at the point of care in the ER who gets admitted to the hospital because they have to stay because they really do have obstructive disease or who doesn't and is clear to go home.
I think it was uh, wonderful that Konica Minolta decided to invest in the most commonly uh, used piece of equipment in any radiology facility in the world, uh, and that's the x-ray machine. And we've, I don't think we have harnessed all of the power uh, and all of the data that comes from a simple x-ray. It's possible, uh, and we've done some preliminary work, to measure blood flow uh, both in your heart and in the vessels that feed your chest. Uh, and again, it, it comes down to harnessing, I think, the power of big data. Uh, that's something that uh, uh, is, is on ev top of everybody's mind these days, especially when it comes to artificial intelligence and machine learning. You really, uh, the, the, those types of algorithms are hungry for data. Um, and so if we have all of these pixels uh, uh, that, you know, kind of measure not only anatomy but, but function and physiology within your body, um, I see that as a next step uh, uh, in the future of how we're going to learn to, to not, not only quantify maybe your, your cardiac function um, with this technology, um, but also uh, uh, perfusion of not only this organ, but really, really any other organ, if, if it's possible. I'm proud of Konica Minolta to be able to produce a machine that can, you know, take a simple x-ray to the next level. Um, I think too often we spend kind of global healthcare capital uh, uh, on equipment that, you know, will produce a revenue later on or uh, that takes too long to image patients. Whereas here we have a device that takes 10 seconds. Uh, it can take all the x-rays you want, but it can also uh, do this dynamic x-ray, um, which has the ability to see things that we've never seen before um, uh, in the same clinical setting. So there's no new footprint you have to build uh, in order to install this uh, unit. Uh, and the cost is not uh, prohibitive, which is the case for a lot of other pieces of radiology equipment that a, a department would or a hospital would buy. My name is Eric Wagner. I'm a upper extremity surgeon, which means I operate on the shoulder, the elbow, the hand, and all the way out to the fingertip. Um, I worked here at Emory for multiple years now, do all kinds of different types of surgeries, all types of different types of research about surgeries, and I work um, pretty closely with a lot of the education that goes on here at Emory too. One of the really exciting things in, in my mind about, uh, about Konica, about the DDRs, is the ability to look at what is happening with these patients' joints from a way that we've never been able to see before. Right now we use all these still images to diagnose people. We take a still x-rays, we take a still MRI, we take a still um, CT scan to give us insight in that moment what's happening inside that joint or inside that muscle or tendon. Um, what what, what uh, DDR has the potential to do and what I think it's going to go towards is as we define how to make a diagnosis or what is normal and what is abnormal with some of these, these, these imaging parameters with some of this motion. As we sort of understand that better, we're gonna understand better, instead of sending them to a static MRI that is you know, costly that, or a CT scan that is expensive, understanding what's actually going on in a dynamic movement of a joint is probably way more valuable and we'll probably avoid needing to do some of these static images that aren't gonna give us the same type of information. Let's say you're looking at the, the wrist. Um, before DDR, you have, um, you have a, a still image of, of what the wrist looks like in time. So it's like taking a, a, it's like in a, in a, on a vacation and taking a picture of, in that instance, what is happening in that instance. And so you can have a, a still image of what is happening in this instance. But you don't know what's happening with the wrist when it's in this position, in this position, or as it's moving from this position to this position. And as you know, patients don't necessarily care as much about their wrist being in this position. They care about their ability to do this. They care about their ability to do this. They care about their ability to move in all kinds of different directions. 
And so by having a still image, you're, it's, like, it's like understanding the difference between watching a, a picture of some place that you're on vacation versus watching a video of, of all that's going on at that specific place. You can actually see all the stuff that's going on at, at a particular time point. So then if you think that the patient has a wrist pain because of one reason, um, but you watch their joints move and that reason doesn't make sense anymore because you've actually seen inside their wrist, now you can sort of refine why you think that patient's having the pain, help you to better diagnose them. And ultimately, we're trying to treat these people. So hopefully help you better treat them. And, and that you've already seen both both when they're, when they're being um, treated and when they're recovering, we've already been able to sort of evaluate and change how, how we're doing certain things or how we're gonna treat certain things based off of how we've seen, them, seen the, the, the joints move. I can definitely see in the near future using this as the primary diagnostic tool and then supplementing it with whatever else. Um, you know, here, obviously, in, in Atlanta and Georgia and in America, there's a big push for, you know, cost-effective, um, you know, only doing things that are medically necessary. You know, this could be a very easy supplement in a lot of patients for, for more expensive MRIs, for higher radiation CT scans, for, um, you know, complementing the, the revolution we're seeing with the ultrasound. I, I think this is... Uh, a very, you know, right now there's a lot of people doing dynamic ultrasounds on things, well, but this gives you a dynamic view of the bones that you can't get from ultrasound. So it's, it's a very nice compliment that's happening in our field right now that I think is going to just pick up steam as, as we sort of better understand how to use it. It's so simple, yet the technology and the innovation that that not only Conoco Minolta had to, to think about actually coming up with this technology, but then actually to do it, and to do it in a reasonable manner that you can apply on a regular basis that's not so bulky, that's not so involved, and is not so dangerous for patients that you're irradiating them in a much higher dose than, than, than just a simple static plain x-ray. I mean, that's, that's the definition of innovation. You're, you're doing stuff that nobody else is doing. You're doing stuff that is that has tremendous potential, that can be widespread, that can be widely applicable, that can change how we do stuff. I mean, it's the same comparison as, as like a smartphone or Apple and how it changed, changed so much that we do. You have something that seems so simple when you look back at it, but yet nobody was doing it for 50 years. Thank you for joining our presentation today. We'd love to hear from you, so please visit us in the Konica Minolta virtual world or contact us with any comments or requests using the information shown on the right of your screen.